Take it back to when you were a student. Mm -hmm. What did you do so that when you entered that practice, you weren't a liability? You were an mm -hmm. at, like you said, your number one asset yeah. in investment. I wanted to be, uh, I didn't want to be a jack of all trades. I wanted to be a master of one. That's great. So I w did not want to rely on the breadth of knowledge that I had of a lot of different skills and techniques. I wanted to rely on the depth of knowledge that I had on just my one technique mm -hmm. that I had practiced literally from the day before school started. That's when I went to my first technique club. Wow. The day before I started at Life University. And I stayed true to that same technique club until the day that I graduated, became an officer, became certified, served that, that technique club until I could be what I, what I felt was equivalent to a Gonstead practitioner that had been out for three years because I essentially had been practicing Gonstead mm -hmm. for three and a half years at the moment that I graduated. So I wanted to make sure that when I got to practice, and this is what a lot of students wonder, they're like, are my adjustments going to even be any good? Like, am I going to be able to deliver any value to people? They can be. But you can't necessarily use chiropractic school the entire time anyway as a place to find yourself as a chiropractor. You have to put a lot of intentionality in in the very first quarters. I would say dedicate your first year to finding the chiropractor that you want to be. That's good. And if you do that intentionally, you will get to a place where at the end of your first year, you will know. And guess what? You'll have two and a half years to then start honing that yeah. so that when you do get out in the world, you do have immediately have value to bring to people. That's right.